Hello everyone and welcome again. Uh, the Celtic Coach here with another story on a Friday with a wee touch of the Blarney. So welcome everyone. All right, this story today is all about um, living your dream. Or in other words, dying is not much of a living. The, uh, the story comes from you about uh, three years ago. I was in Vancouver and I was doing a... Uh, uh, a training there, a special advanced training for uh, co- uh, life coaches. I'm a professional life coach. And on a cold, windy November morning, I uh, made a phone call to have a taxi come to the house, pick me up. Training was over and I was ready to uh, head back to, uh, to where I live here in Northern California. And um, the the, uh, the taxi driver pulled up anyway in his little white Prius and, and out popped this uh, small Indian man. He was about, I don't know, five foot nothing. Very small man. And um, he said, hello, my name is Paramjit and uh, let me get your baggage and here we get in the car and you can sit and relax. And I said, thanks very much, mate. And uh, I said, do you mind if I sit up front? Now, I don't like to sit... Uh, up uh, in the back talking to someone's back of the head I like to be sitting up the front where the action is and where I can sit and talk to the man and, and have a conversation so I got up to the front today when I introduced myself and Paramjit introduced himself and we were just talking about general stuff about Vancouver but uh, uh, when you're in the car with me uh, the conversation doesn't stay at base level for too long <laughs> I like to get to know someone. I like to get to know what are they doing, who are they, what they want out of life, what's important for them. And so uh, I was talking to Paramjit and I said, you know, how long have you been a uh, um, a taxi driver? And he said, oh, for the last 15 years. I said, really? I said, you know, uh, uh, where did you come from before that? And he said, I'm from India. I'm from New Delhi. And uh I said, well, you know, welcome. And he said, have you, have you been here your whole 15 years in Vancouver? And he said, no, he was, he was, he was one year in New York and then uh, decided to come to Vancouver. And uh, I asked him a little bit about his background and he was saying, you know, that he studied political science uh, in his younger years. Now, this man was only in his early 40s, 41, 42. And... Um, we talked a little bit about his life, and he was very passionate about what he did. He was very passionate about uh, political science and, and and studying life in general. And and I noticed something interesting. He he kind of shifted a little bit uh, in his chair because when I was talking to him about his life and what he was doing, and you know, and there was kind of this thing going on. He was driving the car, but he he kind of looked like he was ready to nap. His his shoulders were slumped over, and he was kind of. You know, kind of like this talking, you know, about his life and everything. And, um, gosh, that's so beautiful. That's a hawk out there. Um, and he said, um, you know, I moved here. And then his voice started to slow down again. And he started to kind of hunch over. And when he'd finished talking about his, his, his life, his political science life, he was, stand, he was sitting up uh, quite straight. And then as he talked about his life, I could see this happening. And then he's driving the car and he's talking, his head's down, down a little bit. I noticed it with posture. It's very important, very interesting, the things that we notice when people talk about their dreams, they tend to open up, they tend to talk, they tend to, their voice uh, opens up and, and, and they become a little bit more uh, exaggerated. And when they're talking about life and they're talking about this is not working and this is not working, they tend to go, their body tends to close down a bit. So I was noticing this anyway with Paramjit. And then I said to Paramjit, I said, you know, Paramjit, if, if you had enough money to take care of your family, you had a daughter and a wife here in Vancouver, and um, I said, what would you do with your life? I said, would you be taxi driving or would you be doing something else? And with that, he kind of shifted in his, in his seat and he kind of moved and the shoulders kind of came back a little bit and the chest came up a little bit and his head came up a little bit. And I thought, whoa, something, something major going to happen here. And uh, he started talking about, you know, if I had enough money that my food, my family and my home was all taken care of, I'd start a restaurant. 
And I could tell, I could just hear this now, this, this dream was starting to emerge. And I said, oh, you know, as a, as a good coach, I said, tell me more a little bit about that. And uh, he said, well, he said, you know, I would start an Indian restaurant because my mother had taught me all these recipes and these magical Indian recipes, uh, North Indian food. And um, with that, he started to become alive. It was like, it was like a different person in the, in, in, the, in the cab, driving the cab. And he started talking about the waiters and the waitresses. And he started talking about the people that he would, he would train, the chefs and the sous chefs, and how the line would come up and how the people would be uh, greeted as they came in the door. He talked about the decor of the place. In great deal, he, so he described this whole restaurant and the service that he was going to provide and, and the, uh, the logo that he had for the restaurant and the, the emblem that he was going to use. It was part of his, his Indian heritage. He was going to use this, this mantra um, uh, of an Indian saint and uh, described in detail everything that he was going to do, everything that he was going to be, that he was going to have, that he was going to do in the restaurant and when he was going to do it, where he would do it. You know, he even had a place picked out. And then something happened. I noticed he got quiet for a moment. And then his shoulders came back down. And his head kind of went down a bit. And with that, he said, well, it's just a dream that I have. It's not something that I can do. And I said, what if you could do it, Paramjit? What if you could uh, create that restaurant? You know, what if you could get enough money to take care of your family while you are building this restaurant? What if you could get someone invested in this restaurant? What if you could find some people to support you in the restaurant and, and be part of it with you, partners? And he stopped for a moment and he hadn't really ever thought about it in that way. He was stuck on... It's not something that I can do. It's too big for me. Or, you know, I have a family and I have a wife now and, and I've got to take care of them and I don't have time to be dreaming. And with that, he kind of slumped down a little bit again. And I knew not to press the issue. Uh, however, we were just pulling up to the airport. And before I got out of the car, I looked him straight in the eye and I said, Paramjit, I said, what if you could... What if you could? And he knew what I was talking about. What if I could do that? And with that, his, his, his eyes opened up again. And he said, Maybe I could. And I could see a little smile come on his face. Now, whether he did that restaurant or not, I don't know. But here's the thing, listeners. Diane is not much of a living. And you are not doing anyone any favors by squashing your dreams. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm in my 40s. I only started living my dreams um, uh, in my 40s. I've done a lot of self-development beforehand uh, in my 30s and in my 40s. And what I realized is that I could have been doing this years ago. Years ago, I could have been doing self-development. I could have been being a professional coach. Uh, I could have been doing seminars and workshops. I'm doing them now. But I could have been doing them years ago. And I was living a life that I was getting by, but I really wasn't living my dream. Now, I don't know what the dream, what your dream is. I don't know what your passion is. And maybe it changes like mine. I'm passionate about many things. I'm not sure I believe in the whole live your passion and just do one thing. I think we're meant to do many things. Uh, at least it's been my experience for my own life. So, dying ain't much of a living, everyone. You're not doing anyone favors by just going along with, with the flow, by going along with whatever they say or whatever they say. You know, if you have a dream, whether it's a small dream or whether it's a big dream, whatever it, whatever it is, find out what it is and go for it. 